Hey, Lisa, how you doing today? I hit the record button. We are recording. Amazing. Marky, thank you so much for the introduction. Um, really appreciate this being your brainchild, and I love your comment about volunteerism. I think my word for 2020 was joy, and we have not seen as much joy this year as we thought we would, have we? But we have seen some joy in the numbers in terms of the real estate market. We have gotten lucky, in my opinion, as far as the record low interest rates. They have saved us as an industry this year from what could have been a really, really scary year. And not everybody's had a great year, but a lot of people have. Um, sometimes when I sit in and, and learn from other people, I want to know what exactly is that speaker's background. Um, I love training coaching in my house. Uh, this is my place that you guys see behind me. Um, I actually, the last time the market had this much uncertainty, and I don't want to pay, paint a dark picture, but I do want to tell you that I think there are some clouds on the way, which is why it's so important that we get into this type of training and coaching mindset and get into some better activity overall as a business. Um, the last time the market was this uncertain was 2008, 9, and 10. And why I love training in my home is I always tell the story that uh, the last time the market crashed, I nearly lost my house. It wasn't this house. It was a different one. Um, I had a brand new car with a car, massive car payment. I was not ready for the downturn. I didn't have a database set up properly. I didn't have enough listings. The didn'ts far outweighed the dits. And uh, it was a really rough time for me and a lot of other people um, my exit realty residual saved my business. Um, I was able to pay off debt, eventually buy this place using residual income. But more importantly than that, I learned how to better structure my business through a variety of the coaching and technology at exit and then some outside coaching that I received through a company called Core. Uh, the Core training has been the backbone of my business the last few years. Um, it has raised me as an agent from doing six to eight million, maybe $10 million max a year in sales to this year, I'm already at 11.1 million. I'll probably end the year closer to 15 million. Uh, that will be my best year ever so far in 22 years of business. And I don't say that to brag, but I do like you to know what the numbers are when someone's speaking to you. Um, so far this year, I've closed 34 deals. 14 of those have been my listings, 20 buyers. Um, average price point about 323,000. So if you don't know your numbers yet for the year, um, if you're at, at our office, just go on your agent report card in the exit app. If you are not at our office, um, go online and look for your numbers. Um, I can help you, you know, see how those are, where those are, and give you some advice. Um, I will tell you where my business is not right now. If my business is not um, in my own neighborhood as much as I'd like it to be. I do a lot of transactions in my own neighborhood as far as buyers but I drive down the street and I see a lot of other people's signs. So don't think that just because I'm having a good year, I'm perfect or that I think that I know everything. I know the weaknesses in my business and I hope to share with you um, some things tonight that will maybe th have you think about your business. So this is a multi-step process. Um, it is sourcing your deals from this year and figuring out what's gone well. And then also just like I mentioned to you, taking a look at your business for some weaknesses. So what are the strengths? the weaknesses and the opportunities for you for 2021. I, I know we're all ready to turn the page on 2020 and get into 2021. Um, but as far as why I mentioned some dark clouds, I do want to give you a kind of like a, a yellow caution light on what's going to be happening over the next couple of months. We've had record low interest rates for about eight weeks now, maybe closer to 12 weeks. Um, the newness of that is wearing thin. Also in relation to the overall industry, and the economy as a whole, we are now entering what may be potentially a second wave. Um, this is not a political discussion. It's not about the election. It's a health issue. And we know what's going on in Europe will probably be happening here soon. I wanted to make sure at five o'clock today to catch the news and the numbers uh, continue to alarm me and many others. Even if you are not sick, someone uh, near you isn't sick, those numbers and the resulting trauma to the economy if we do end up this winter having to go back into some sort of quarantine situation uh, or rollback of what we've seen in the last couple of months in terms of getting back out there in the public um, that is a real potential and if you see that along with october 1st you will see the um ppp loans everybody that took ppp money the payroll protection act money 
they October 1st have the right to start laying people off. They did not have that right uh, if they did not want to pay those loans back prior to October 1st. So you're going to see some layoffs and how big those numbers are and how big the um, illness gets this winter and how big the rollbacks get this winter will play a huge part in whether we see a continuation of the good year a lot of us had, the record year a lot of us at Exit had, um, or some troubling numbers to come. So that is important to note because I think some people right now, oh, I'm too busy for training or coaching. I, you know, I'm too busy to send out just sold cards. I don't want to do an open house. My listings are sell selling quickly. It may not be as easy for those of us that had it a little easier this year. So that word that of caution, that yellow um, flashing sign, I'm going to put out there before we begin. So what are we going to do tonight? We're going to talk about three different things. And this is step one through three of a much bigger conversation about putting together an outline for your business for the coming year. But this is what I want you to think about. Wider versus deeper, branding concepts, and then lead sources. So in your business, if you're brand new, all this is going to be new to you. If you're not new, you're going to pick up some stuff, hopefully, that you're not doing or that you could improve on as well as things you say, okay, well, I can check that box. I'm done with that. So let's go first wider versus deeper. This is a conversation I had recently on a podcast. Uh, I'm on a radio show on Sundays that uh, I have some fun with. And one of the conversations about that uh, on that radio show recently was, why are we always going wider, myself included? Uh, you know, at one point I was working uh, across three states to try to get enough business or try to get to the income goal I wanted driving an hour and a half, two hours sometimes uh, in a morning to get between appointments. Um, I use something called the Lifecycle app. Uh, it's on Apple. There's a similar version on Android. The Lifecycle app taught me that I was in the car more than I was in the office. I was in the car more than I was with clients. Something was wrong there. And so I was going so wide because I wasn't going so deep. And I want you to consider before you expand into a new zip code or if you start a new lead generation system or put money on a credit card or out of your bank account for another lead source, have you really gone deep enough in the places where you're at? Have you really gone deep enough in the places where you're already at? So let's think about that. So the first thing I want to tell you is you've got to, and again, I'm going to, I hope you can see this. I have not the best penmanship on a, on a marker board, but I'm going to talk through this as well. Um, first thing I want you to think about is your CRM. I hope you have a CRM. If you don't or you don't know how to use it, uh-oh, that's a problem. Because your CRM and your phone are your baseline. Before you get anywhere else, do you have in your CRM the ability to sync up directly to your phone? That's something that when I looked at CRMs for our office, I said, I'm tired of hearing the conversations out there about what about this CRM? What about that CRM? That one's too expensive. I just bought one for everybody. And I use it. It syncs up to my phone. It syncs up to everybody's phone. Your CRM has to be fairly easy to use. And almost any CRM product that's worth its weight in, you know, whatever, um, is going to sync up to your phone. Because your CRM, when it feeds from your phone, it should have your entire sphere in it. So everybody that you know, whether it's John the painter or Sally the barber, whatever their names are, Hopefully you've got their first and last name, not just their trade name. Um, that's got to be the first thing you do. Because a lot of people that I know, they're buying leads off Zillow and places like that. We're going to get later on into lead sources. But they're buying leads and talking, trying to talk to strangers. And they haven't even really gone deep enough with their own sphere. Is everybody in your sphere actually even getting your monthly newsletter? Are you sending out a monthly newsletter? Is it a quality one? Um, so that, that's going to be the first thing. The second thing I want you to work with is LinkedIn. I'm getting a huge amount of business and traction off of LinkedIn. LinkedIn, you know, what I love about LinkedIn is now it feels like Facebook. It tells people's birthdays. You can download all their contact information, which is unlike Facebook or Instagram or anything else. LinkedIn is huge. If you're not using LinkedIn and you don't have everybody synced up from LinkedIn to your CRM, get that done now. That is huge. MLS. Is everybody in the MLS that you've ever worked with in your CRM? I'm shocked when I sit down with agents from, and I coach agents not just in our office, but from other exit offices as well. Um, when I talk to them or when I talk to people in the industry and I say, you know, how do you talk to your past clients? Well, I really don't talk to them that much. Oh, okay, that's an issue. So if you don't have all your past clients and all your current clients 
from the MLS in your CRM, it takes about five minutes to download from almost any MLS that I've ever coached in um, from that into your CRM. Your farming list. A lot of us have farming lists. If you are not putting that farming list in your CRM, you're making a huge mistake. So if you send out a just sold card, but you don't have those people in your CRM, that's an issue. Um, my goal for you is that you have at least 500 people in that CRM, at least 500. A lot of us on here have at least five, um, and I'm gonna answer some of those questions coming in later. Uh, a lot of us in there have 5,000 that are doing a lot of business. It is almost directly relatable when I sit down with an, agent, with an agent to their overall business, what the number is in their CRM. But don't be fooled, just because you have 500 names in there doesn't mean that I count them or you should count them as a full person. And what do I mean by that? Your phone and your CRM have to have at least the following information. First name, last name. Now that should be obvious. However, if you look in my phone, until about two years ago, I had a lot of John the Painters and Sally the Barbers in there. I didn't have their first name and their last name and spelled right. Email address, why is that? Should be a no brainer because guess what? You need to send them your monthly e-newsletter. That is a baseline to me. If you're not sending some sort of monthly communication by email, that makes me question how good your contact list even is. So that is a baseline, the email address. Phone number, they're in your phone, right? You've got their phone number, hopefully. If you don't have their email address or phone number, consider reaching out. Say, hey, you know what? I'm looking forward to catching up with you. How, how has 2020 been for you? Because you know you're gonna get an earful from everybody. People are at home. People are gonna talk to you more right now than they were going to talk to you six or seven months ago. So email address, phone number, and then eventually their home address. Why is that important? We're gonna talk about that later with direct mail. But their home address, a lot of us, myself included, don't even have all their past clients' home addresses in their database. And that's a shame because you're missing out on the opportunity to do what? Go beyond email into direct mail and some of the other stuff we're gonna talk about. Home address and then birthday. If you don't have their birthday in your phone, are you really their contact? Are you really their friend? You need to be acknowledging at least three to five birthdays a day. Um, if you're not doing that, I don't think you've got 500 plus people that are real contacts in your CRM. So in my calendar every morning, that's one of the first things I do. I look and I see who's in the calendar already and then I go on my social media, on LinkedIn and Facebook, it tells you who's people's birthdays and you should be picking at least one to two new people to add to your CRM as far as your birthday for them, okay? Um, so birthdays, your social media is a great way to start the day um, I don't want you sitting on it all day, but you need to be acknowledging birthdays. That should be a baseline. Again, social media. Um, let's talk about that because that is a double-edged sword. Um, what I love about social media is that you can, for free, build a presence online. But what I see a lot of people doing is all they do is post. They don't interact. They don't have any call to action, and there's no lead capture. So I want you to consider for now on when you post on social media, for example, some of you just logged in and signed up and registered for this, what, two, three hours ago because you saw my post or you saw a post from somebody else about this. If you're gonna educate, you're gonna promote events, or you're gonna promote property, you have to have a call to action and you have to have lead capture. So if you look back a couple days ago for me, um, and if we're not already connected on Instagram and LinkedIn, connect with me there. Those are the two best for content for me. LinkedIn and Instagram. I'm Nick Libert on both of them. I just had to spell my name if you guys don't know me. Um, but what I try to do, and I don't always do it yet, but since I'm coaching you on it, what is that going to make me do? It's going to drag me into doing the same stuff properly. I have a call to action almost always, but I don't always have lead capture. Why is it key to have lead capture? Well, if somebody wants more information, are you just spitting out the information or part of it, hoping they get to you? Or are you also then just responding to messages and not getting these people into your CRM? That's my concern. Because if we're talking about wider versus deeper and you're not going deep enough to get people's information, you're just spitting out your information, that is again gonna make you go wider and spend money or spend time in the car to service enough people to survive or thrive when you haven't gone deep enough. So call to action and lead capture on every single social media post. 
Um, I want you to share your life. So one of the things I've seen as an issue is nobody wants to be sold. People want to connect with you. They want to have value from you, but they also, they're going to get to know you. And I have this debate sometimes with people when social media first came out into prominence in 2009, maybe 2010, a lot of people, uh, social media, quote unquote, experts at the time were saying, oh, you just have to have a, a professional page. Never, you know, put anything on your personal page. Um, you know, don't connect with clients on your personal page. Well, the problem is none of my friends want to be on my professional page. My, my business page has zero traction with my natural organic database. My business page on Facebook is to boost posts to expand it beyond my regular network. Let me say that again. My business page on Facebook is only to boost things beyond my natural network. Now, ironically, Facebook owns Instagram, and it's a completely different scenario on Instagram. On Instagram, you only need one account, and it's going to be combined business and personal because on Instagram, you can boost posts and you can advertise from your Instagram, but it has to have the setting for business. All you need to do for that on Instagram is go into your settings, go scroll all the way down to the bottom, and it will say, is this a business page? The answer is yes, a business profile. No one will notice the difference. So your friends won't care. My friends have no idea that mine is secretly a business page. How do you know the difference? If you wanna look at other realtors' pages, you go and you look, and, and if they have an extra line of text at the top that says, you know, maybe their website, or you always see, see link in bio, probably how a couple of you signed up to get here tonight, that link in bio is actually indicating to you and I, as other business owners, that that's a business page. So that's the only way you're gonna know the difference. But either way, you wanna share your life because people want to get to know you. This is a relationship business. They don't wanna deal with a stranger. They wanna deal with someone that they can relate to. So you're gonna get them in your car at some point anyway, right? Hopefully. And you're gonna be driving around with them in your car or you're gonna be sitting at their dining room table or on their living room couch hearing about their life. They're gonna to get to know you anyway. So I like to share a little bit of my life with my audience. UVP, what is your UVP, your unique value proposition? Um, I try to share my mind is empowering lives through real estate because I truly believe that real estate is such a amazing value for someone's overall life to build a legacy, to build financial wealth for them and their family. So that's my UVP. What is yours? What is your slogan? Why are you here? Why are you in real estate? You need to be able to answer that and articulate that. And I think occasionally that should pop up on your social media. Should be obvious that you love what you do, okay? Let's go move on from social media to direct mail. If you are not doing direct mail, I would recommend going back to it. Now what I will warn you about direct mail is that it is not something you do that you send out and you just spit stuff out. You want to have a purpose behind it. So birthdays, I love doing birthday cards because guess what? People love opening birthday cards and it's a lost start. So I send birthday cards out to my core VIPs. Um, that requires a little bit of advanced planning. That requires a um, CRM. And that requires what else? Their home address. If you don't have their home address, what a great day to say, hey, can I get your home address? I've got a little birthday card for you and start building up this CRM to that 500 plus that actually have all the information we talked about, okay? So that's one thing I do direct mail for. Events, I don't do a lot of event direct mail, but you wanna be doing a lot of events and maybe sometimes you've planned that event out far enough in advance. I have a whole training on events and on doing a 12 month marketing calendar. At our office, we do events for the agents every month so they can promote it to their database. But you wanna think about doing some direct mail there. Testimonials, now you would, might say, well, don't I just put those online? You do put them online. I share them on my social media, uh, but I also send out what's called an evidence of success. That is a core tactic from the core training, uh, which I'm the graduate of. That testimonial um, was one of the best things that I've started doing. The evidence of success is just saying, hey, I sold some real estate, and people were happy. It's kind of goes up beyond, here's what I got for sale. Here's what I'm trying to do for you. And since I'm actually really good at what I do. So think about doing that once a quarter. Um, but that again requires what their home address and then lastly direct mail just sold um, I have some just sold cards. I actually think I brought one home with me From the vendor that I use 
find that real quick for us. So the vendor that I use in Coach On, if you're in my coaching program, you know uh, who this vendor is. Um, you can do them for just sold. You can do them for just listed. I actually don't like them as much for just listed. But what they do with my cards is they actually have a either a QR code that people can scan or a some sort of text code or input code. So I can actually track who's not only who's getting these, but who's opening them up in terms of going online and finding out what their home is worth. So then I can do what? Put them in my CRM and I can follow up with them. We're gonna talk about funnels again in a little bit. But just sold cards are now starting to be a big part of my business as I am selling a good amount of real estate in my neighborhood to buyers, but I don't have the traction with sellers I should because I wasn't strategically thinking about just sold cards and uh, prospecting my own neighborhood. So let's talk about events. I love events. That is another thing I learned from Core. I never threw a single event for anybody. Uh, you know, strategically at least, until Core. Core taught me how to do a lot of stuff more strategically. Um, but even before we get into the core ideas, are you doing open houses? I'm getting a lot of buyer leads off of open houses, and I'm also selling, once in a while, my listings through open houses. But it's gotta be a strategic open house. And what do open houses also work well with? Your social media and your boosted posts to expand your network, okay? So you've got to think about that. Um, the Exit Realty Connect app, for those of you guys that exit, now has an amazing thing they call the Flex Blueprint. So you can sit there, press a couple buttons, and your open houses ad is up. But what does that require? Planning, so that you know in advance when your open house is going to be and can plan for it. But if you're not lead generating by doing open houses, you must have a lot more business than me. Buyer seminars, seller seminars, fun and charity events. Now, of course, some of you are thinking in the back of your mind, well, it's COVID, I can't do any of those. Guess what? A lot of the buyer traffic I've gotten this year, now they may have already been talking to me about real estate, some of them, but they really got cemented into me as their agent when I did these seminars by Zoom. So don't make it an excuse to not have a event because it's quarantined. Lana uh, is on our um, call tonight. Uh, she's a, a, one of our top agents, and Lana does some of the coolest events. During quarantine, she had the option, as did everybody else, well, I'm going to bury my head in my sand and cry, or I'm going to continue to figure out a way to adapt and throw events. She's thrown virtual, all kinds of cool virtual events. Um, she's had, she had, I think right now she's got 14 deals under contract, three or four closings this week. Um, that's a lot of business, and her, she is known for her events. I'm known more kind of for seminars. I guess people don't like my fun events, um, but I actually do a lot of my fun events as more um, parties, which during COVID, how did I survive? I had some virtual book clubs for my friends. It actually worked out pretty good. Um, and then I've done some small group stuff outside. Uh, don't think that because of COVID, that's an excuse to stop doing this stuff. You just gotta be creative. Fun and charity, you can do charity stuff. I did an entire can of food drive uh, with some of our agents and we had so much fun doing it. I went and picked stuff up, gloves on, mask, all that. You can still be active in your community. The last thing about events is signage. Now, that really directly relates mostly to open houses. So I'm actually gonna draw an arrow there, but it also signage relates to just sold. So when you do a new sign, you obviously have this great sign for a listing. I want you to think about in that as well, getting some sort of call to action and lead capture. So my issue with most agent signs, and I won't mention any particular competitors, but there's some people that talk wonderful about technology and then I roll past their sign and you know, the office number's on there. Why is the office number on there? Because that's gonna go to someone on floor time. Floor time died 20 years ago. It should not be going to anybody but you as the listing agent or your team phone number. Um, beyond that, uh, how many of you like calling salespeople? How many people, think that people like calling you, they don't. So I wanna make sure on my signs that I have some sort of thing, like a smart sign. All of our exit signs have, all of our exit listings, once they're in the MLS, they have a smart code that's assigned to them. You should be using the smart code or your digital business card if you're at exit. If you're not at exit, hopefully you have technology like that. Um, I'm putting on all my signs my digital business card, um, which then when they text that, guess what happens? I get their cell phone number because they're standing in front of it and they're texting it. So of course I still have a traditional phone number there just in case they want to call me. 
Nobody calls that number. They are always texting. I, you know, it's great to put a website on. How many people are going to sit in front of the listing and, and do that? And the other problem is when they do that, you don't know when they're on there. You have nothing to report back to your seller and you certainly don't have any lead to follow up with and then do what? Put in your CRM in your database, okay? Um, which actually brings me to a good point of what are you doing in terms of lead intake? So next we're gonna talk about funnels. If you don't know what happens when your leads come in, oh yeah, I answer all of them. I personally have found that I have spent time and invested resources in getting new leads when in my inbox and my cell phone, there are old leads that I did not follow up with enough. There was no intake. What do I mean by intake? That's called a funnel. So any of your leads at this point should really be treated, I don't wanna say the same, but they also get a good quality of five to seven touches from you before you sit there and throw them in the garbage. And sometimes some of you, why don't you just respond to them the first time? Myself included in that category, I've had an issue this year when I did get busy of not getting back to people quick enough. So funnels, what is your intake? What does it look like when people first text you or first email you? Do they get a response quickly? Is the response good? What does it look like when you first uh, do that? There is now in our CRM, uh, at our office, the capability of when you first get a lead, you can actually assign it to a campaign and they can start getting emails or video emails from you, okay? So I want you to start thinking about what does your intake look like? Once they get in there, are they also on your social media? That was a big step for me. Um, somebody inquired about two years ago on a listing of mine, never heard from them again, added them on LinkedIn, forgot about it. I don't even know if they're getting my newsletter, but guess what? They put a LinkedIn message, which I missed for a day and a half in full disclosure. They put a message to me on LinkedIn. They said, hey, I've been following you on LinkedIn. Uh, we're thinking about selling our place. And I'm like, well, I, this name sounds kind of familiar. Go back and I look in my, in my email. And this person originally had looked at one of my listings online, never, never heard from him again. They're now selling a quite large place with me. Um, like quite large as in like a million dollars. Um, not mad about that lead. I only think that they remembered me because of social media. So when you get a lead, what is the intake? Does that also include adding on social media? For those of you guys that are office, stay tuned for a really big update to what you will be able to find out about people online in terms of connecting with them on social media much quicker through our CRM. Once you get them on social media or at the same time, make sure they're added to your monthly newsletter. It should be as quick as a click of a button. And then are they getting your event invites? So are you throwing monthly events? If you're at our office, you just plug them into ours if you want to they should be getting some sort of event invite. Now I do mine in my monthly newsletters, but then all my VIPs, all the people that I feel like could be buying soon, that I've ranked that way in my CRM, um, they get some sort of personal invite, hopefully a text or a phone call, um, inviting them to the event. And lastly, the HomeSnap app. Um, I've started adding more people to the HomeSnap app and I've been getting some interesting responses to that, that people are actually kind of looking around, they've added themselves as a client, and they're starting to browse around and look on there and adding some favorites, and they weren't looking with me yet. They didn't indicate to me that they were even interested. So use your tools. Uh, Mark, you mentioned that we are doing, uh, at our office, we're now you know, a member uh, or a shareholder in MRAD. I know it sucks to pay those MLS dues every quarter, but we have more tools in this MLS than almost any other MLS I've seen and how would I know? Well, because I am still a member of two other MLSs, Northwest Indiana and the Southwest Michigan. And um, we have a lot more tools. Let's just put it that way. So wider versus deeper. I hope this is a productive start to our thought process on what we need to do differently, enhanced, or better for 2021. Um, let's talk about branding. I think this, for a lot of people, they run to branding because they don't want to do the, the prospecting. All right, they don't want to do this work, so they run to brand. I need to change the color of my logo. Nobody cares. Uh, we have a wonderful graphic designer at our office that I pay for so that you can play with the colors on your branding. What I will warn you, though, is that that is like rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic. If you have not done this stuff, this is the fun stuff. You don't get to do this till you do this, okay? Uh, but I think it is important to have a nice looking brand. You know, at our company, at 
a good number of companies now they're allowing you to brand yourself you should be branding yourself it is not about exit it's not about remax or wherever you're at nobody's calling the front desk they're calling the agent that made a relationship to them by doing this stuff up here no one's calling the front desk no one is emailing the general inbox they're emailing the person that posted something or or gave them something an item of value maybe that prompted them to respond okay Branding concepts, though. Let's go ahead and talk about it now that I that I uh, threw mess all over it. Headshot. Do you have a good headshot? I've heard our very nice operations manager at our, our office. She's been with us nine years. We love Laura. Uh, Laura told me, she goes, that headshot of you isn't looking, looking the same anymore. It looks exactly like me. It's four years old. Now, if she told me that, that means some of you are probably thinking that. I think I might need a new headshot. Doesn't need to be the most amazing headshot ever but if you drive up in your car and people don't recognize you it might be time for a new headshot that headshot though should be everywhere so you can make fun of mine right now but that headshot is on almost every single thing I send out so if you those of you guys that know my marketing and some of my social media that little orange face that's everywhere um, so that headshot needs to be prominent and the same everywhere domain name you don't need a hundred domain names get one go to GoDaddy get one if you're at our office you just need to forward it to our uh, website that we have for each one of you, your own website. Um, simple, simple stuff, guys. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. People are not going to go to your website instead of Zillow. All right. People are going to go to your website when they find, want to find out about you or if you've given them content like a blog that is on that website. Then you need to be thinking about social media. Okay. Does that social media look, headshot, domain, etc.? Um, does that look like you? Is it clear that you're a realtor? Um, I get sometimes some, you know, agents that are new to coaching with me that I click on their social media. I would have no idea you're a realtor. Um, you might be a serial killer, but you're not a realtor. That needs to change. So you, you can't miss the fact that I'm a realtor online. You may find out about a couple of my other hobbies and you may, you know, have some fun on there and not making fun of me. Um, but uh, social media, you know what I do, and you know that I like what I do. So you need to think about that. Take a look at it from not your perspective, but a 360 degree worldview. Um, at the beginning of quarantine, I have a good friend um, that works at McDonald's corporate. And before that, he was at Walmart. So big, big brands, big into branding. And you know, he sat there from a 360 degree view and he goes, it's very clear you're a realtor. It's very clear you're this. It's not very clear why you're a realtor. I'm like, oh, interesting. I'm like, well, I can tell you that all day. He goes, well, I can't tell it from your social media. So we did some rebranding. Um, voicemail and email signature. This is wasted space if you're not doing a really good email signature. How many emails do you send out a day? How many people leave you a voicemail? Not as many as it used to be, but email and voicemail signatures. I don't think you need a text signature because if you get into conversations with someone, it's like, you know, how often do you need to see that text signature? But I think the voicemail and email signature, if I call you and it doesn't say, you know, this is Nick Liber with Exit Realty or whatever your greeting is, and it just has the general voicemail box, that doesn't really, to me, sound like you're very professional in real estate. I would strongly uh, urge you to look at those both. Logo and signage. Um, I do have a logo. It's not on this particular sign. It's a little logo, and then right next to it's the Exit logo. They're side by side. That's kind of what you see more and more of us doing to meet IDFPR guidelines. And if you guys are from other states, talk to your managing broker about what your guidelines are. But I do like to have a logo. Um, I think it's nice. I think again though, if you haven't done all this stuff here on top, you're rearranging desk chairs on the Titanic. Bio and tagline. Why are you here? Now, my friend and I, when we sat down at the beginning of quarantine and you know, he said, well, it's very obvious that you're a realtor, but I don't know your story. Well, if you go on my LinkedIn, that story's there. If you go on my website, that story is there. Now I'm kind of rearranging that and making sure that you see the unique value proposition of my tagline in more places, but that bio should be on all of your stuff and it should be the same. Cut and paste it from one to the, the next. If you want to know how to do a bio, um, I've got some stuff I think on YouTube um, about writing a good realtor biography. So you can just do a YouTube search and then put in my name and realtor biography. I think that's that you can find it. If you're in our office, it's on uh, the coaching blog. Digital business card. How many guys are passing out paper right now? Not a lot. Because how many people are we meeting right now? 
but if you've got a digital business card, you can be passing that out to everybody. So if you want my contact information right now and you want to test out a digital business card, text LIBERT to 85377. That's L-I-B-E-R-T to 85377. So if you're speaking on a Zoom or you're speaking in a room when we finally get a chance to again, or you're posting on your social media, everybody has that and you're not passing out paper or cardboard or whatever type of business card you have. So I really like a digital business card. It tells a lot more about you than a piece of paper can. Obviously, if you're still passing out paper business cards and you need an update, that would be something to work with on your branding as well. Um, I want to take some questions in a bit, but I want to do one more thing. And that is, what are your lead sources? This is what I want to kind of leave you with tonight in terms of where is your business? Where's your business going to be in 2021? There are really only three sources of leads. And if you've ever been on my LinkedIn before and clicked on the articles that I've published, those are all for real estate agents. Um, and I talk a lot about where the lead sources are, where the funnels are. There's really only three. Prospecting, prospecting, prospecting. And think about this lead source. Think about it as, um, think about it as your store, okay? Think about it as your store. You, if you're brand new, you just opened your store. If you're like me and you've been doing this a while, your store is not new, uh, but you've opened a store. It's virtual, maybe. It's not virtual if you own your own company, but um, you opened a store. And how are you gonna get business into that store? Every morning, you have three options. And that is go out and bang on other people's doors, so to speak, whether that's electronically, in person, that is going out to the street and grabbing people off the street and saying, hey, I've got a great store, come into my store. So that's open houses, that's farming, that's cold calling, that's expires, that's fizzbos. All the old school stuff that I learned 22 years ago and 21 years ago and still take the classes on because there's always something new to learn, that still works, that does not ever stop working, all right? But prospecting gets hard, I understand that. Um, I hate cold calling. You don't hear me doing a lot of cold calling if you're in my office or if you come over to my home office and coach with me. Not a lot of people love prospecting, but guess what? Prospecting works and a lot of it's free. So if you're short on leads, this is a go-to. The second one is paid leads. Very controversial, has been for a long, long time. I have a relatively new agent in our office that I just think she's great. Um, she's been doing a lot of prospecting. Well, she got a call from one of those nice sources of paid leads um, or advertising. And um, if you've ever gotten this call, it's one of the biggest $2,000 mistakes I ever made. It is the people that sell you the grocery cart ads. I did that many years ago when $2,000 was a lot more money than it is today, and particularly for a new agent. And I gotta tell you, the only calls I got were from friends of mine making fun of me. And you know that was it, nobody called. What can you do that's so amazing on a grocery cart that people are going to just stop and call you? Which, by the way, most of the grocery cart, because those ads are still running for some people that are spending the money. Um, you know, when I go to Mariano's or Jewel, there's somebody's face. What are you going to do? Um, it's not, there's not enough time. There's not enough message. And you probably haven't done all the other prospecting in the neighborhood to make that an effective move. Paid leads, though, overall, most of the sources can work can work, but they're expensive. So if you want to throw it on a credit card on Zillow or on some of the other sources like that, you're going to have to really be prepared to turn around and work that funnel. You're going to have to be prepared to contact these strangers five to seven times to have a decent return on your investment. I've worked with Zillow. I have agents that have wonderful luck with Zillow. I don't talk bad about it because guess what? Guess where the traffic's going on the internet besides social media? Traffic on the internet, if you're looking to buy a place or maybe even sell a place, is going to only a few sites and Zillow's number one. So I'm not going to sit there and trash them, but I'm also going to tell you that's a hard, hard, hard time to break even or have a return on investment that's significant. And it certainly can't be your only source of business. All right. But paid leads work. Just like if you own this little store and you've got billboards up and you've got bus benches, it can work but it's a lot of money out the door and you've already got the basic expenses of owning your store. So there's prospecting and paid leads and then there's referrals. That is where I thrive. That's where some of our top agents thrive, but you can't only live off referrals because guess what? Number one, as a new agent, you're not gonna get a lot right away. 
unless you have an amazing network of people that love you and that already feel like you're the best thing since sliced bread as a new agent is really hard to get referrals at the beginning. It takes a long time to build up that level of respect. Social media can help. Events can help. Obviously, you know, you will get them over time. It'll be amazing. What I love about referrals is I wake up every morning. I don't have to go knock on other people's door, or grab them to come to my store. I don't have to pay for leads to come to my store. People are knocking on the door to get into my store, but it took a long time to do that. And by the way, I still do some of the rest of it. Okay. Most all top agents do. And once you get the referral, what do you have to do? Make sure they go in the funnel. You have to make sure you do a wonderful job with them. You have to put them in the CRM and treat them the same way that you would any of these other leads. Some people, they get referrals and it's like, well, it's a friend of a friend. I don't have to do that much. No, you have to do the same stuff. And then you have to treat them like gold after the sale, the same way you would a stranger. And one of the saddest things I've seen for those of you guys that do spend money on leads is you spend money on the paid leads. So you pay a bunch of stuff money to get people in your store and then you don't service them. Either you don't do a good job on the way in or you close the deal and then you, they never hear from you again. That is wasted money. You'll never get a good ROI and you'll never grow out of paid leads if you're sitting there paying for them, closing the deal and never talk to them again. This, no matter what you do, you're at the end of the day going to treat them the same. You're going to put them in your funnel. You're going to provide wonderful value. You're going to add them on your social media to your CRM. And that relationship never ends. If you look at this year out of the 34 deals I've done, I've had more past clients and referrals from past clients than ever, only because I'm doing the events. I'm making sure that the people that I didn't follow up with back in the day that I closed deals with, you know, the transactions that I did and I forgot about the people that I'm starting to rebuild those relationships. They're on my social media. They can come back to you over time if you provide value and remind them why they liked being in your car two, five, ten years ago. So I talked a long time. I would love to answer some questions. Uh, Mark, I don't know if do you want to um, read the questions to me? I can read the questions, but I also wanted to give two tips real quickly uh, on some of the content that you provided. One is, uh, this was a birthday card that I received and it said, happy birthday month. So this year I turned 50. Barbet, she's a uh, top selling agent out of Long Beach. She basically buys her cars a year in advance and she goes through Facebook and she sends out these cards. So I'll always remember she is the first birthday card I got for my 50th birthday. But I already when I saw it, I said, Oh, that's great. Every once a year in uh, January, she can order cards for the entire year. She goes over to Facebook. She finds your mailing address. She puts you into the customer relationship management system. I'm sure she's getting these cards for a low price because she's buying them in bulk. So think about something like this would work. Another thing, Marshalls, TJ Maxx, Ross, uh, Trader Joe. I buy a lot of little cards for, these are what, uh, $1.99 cent? These are pet sympathy cards. Couple of things, it's inevitable. People are going to die. And because people are letting you know via Facebook that they've lost someone near and dear to them, including their pets, I would say go and buy you, uh, buy you cards all the time. So I keep a bin of cards. Um, at all times for every single occasion so that I can mail the cards out. So I just wanted to give that uh, additional tip for standing out in the mailbox uh, and having a customer relationship management system. And think about mailing when other people don't mail. So I believe in Valentine's Day for women. Be very careful about that. I would never ma mail a man a Valentine's Day card but my husband because I don't want they woman to get mad. And for me, and I send Father Day cards based on my husband's personal complaint that uh, men aren't acknowledged for being fathers like mothers, women are for being mothers. So, yep, I can read those questions for you. Okay, so Cassandra Sneed says she has an entire system. I do want to give a shout out to Cassandra. Cassandra worked very diligent on the exit business plan. She did take things off of her business plan. And I want to say when we looked at numbers, was she 712 
8.5% year over year in her growth. So you will see that she posts consistently. She does a lot of acknowledgement, but she has a business plan. She did post a video. Growing your database with the uh, exit. She, oh, so Cassandra shared some of the videos from Nick that Nick has created. You can sync Facebook birthdays to your calendar. So they auto-populate your calendar. So Facebook has an API where you can sync that with your calendar to tell you what every single day of the year is. One of the tools that I like to also sync uh, with my calendar, I'll do screen share. Um, and I'm going to have to give another shout out to Cassandra. Cassandra doesn't know this. Um, I wanted to applaud her. Last year, she did um, an ice cream social with Kilwin's ice cream. This year, they took her idea, let me be clear with you, and they ran with their idea, and they had like the Chicago Bears and things of that nature. But this is wave.video forward slash calendar. If you're ever running out of ideas to talk about, come over here and see what is of interest to people in your sphere of influence. And you get to also sync this with your calendar, whether that's Google, iCal, or Outlook. So just some additional tools that you can use. But last year, Cassandra did a big ice cream social. She partnered with a lender. That came from the Michael Mayer's book. Um, and she, I think she had them to agree to 25 scoops of ice cream. They ended up giving out 50 scoops of ice cream. And then this year they decided that they would just do this whole big thing. Uh, so guys, just some things. Do you sign your cards and enclose business cards? Great question. Um, for the sympathy cards, no, I do not. Um, I just send them the card and I sign my name. So for sympathy cards, absolutely not. For Valentine's Day, Father Day cards, yes. But for the sympathy, the, the death, based on the sensitivity of the date, I might not include my business card. Hey, Nick, let's see. So that was a question. Oh, well, Nick, the question would be for you then too, right? Do you always put your business card in your cards? In my, absolutely not. Um, I do not at all. And the reason why is I am sending birthday cards to people that are of a higher quality level in my database than a stranger. So if I look up my Facebook and LinkedIn in the morning, it's gonna tell me there's between six and 12 birthdays in each. I'm not gonna send a birthday card to all six. I'm gonna pick out one or two. For example, today is Annette Anthony's birthday. She's VP of technology engagement at EXA. It's her birthday today. She's gonna get something from me. Some of the other people on there are not just because now I may wish them a happy birthday on their messaging system or I may text them, but you know, I'm not going to do that with everybody. So the people that physically get something from me, they better darn well if I've done my job on social media, know who the heck I am. If you get a card from Marky, you know who the heck Marky is. So I don't think anybody that gets a card from me needs my business card. And it kind of takes the value out of, for me at least, a personal handwritten um, card. So mine are handwritten. The address is handwritten. Now, full disclosure, I have someone else do the handwriting on the front. They stamp it for me. So it's addressed and it's ready to go. And then I write on the inside of the actual card what I want to say. It's handwritten. I do not believe personally in the electronic um, ones that are out there because I like people to see my terrible handwriting and know that it's physically from me. And I probably have something personal to say to them. Hey, let's catch up. You know, sorry to hear about your dog, et cetera. Whatever happened, because I'm also going to click on their social media and catch up uh, before I send that card. There's a philosophy from Annette Anthony, speak of, uh, speaking of her, that's seven by seven. I know Lana uses that. Some of you guys use that. That's find seven people to engage with by 7 a.m. every day. And sometimes it's sympathy. Sometimes it's birthday, sometimes it's celebration, sometimes it's just checking in because they're having a bad or a good time. Um, but there's always something going on with somebody that could be acknowledged. Um, and the bottom line is, I don't think a business card is appropriate in most of that because I'm not a stranger to them. You know what, I'm gonna say this about Annette Anthony, now I need to go love on her. And I know that she practices the seven and seven last week. I did a webinar, flowers showed up at my house within a couple of hours of doing the webinar for Exit Elite. But then what she also did, I made a post maybe a month ago about the fact that when they buried me, they did not know that I was a seed. She sent me a pack of seeds. 
um, with a little card that talked about blooming. And it almost, I almost cried because I'm like, wow, how freaking thoughtful was just a pack of seeds. It let me know that she internalized what my post was. So the seven by seven, Nick, I'm actually going to implement that into my business starting tomorrow. You cried. I, yeah, I did. I teared up. I, I just went on the back porch, had to have a cup of coffee, get my mind right, right? Because I'm like, God, how great was this um, that someone would just send you a pack of seeds, right? Um, but you could buy these seeds up and have them just in case, you know, but it was just the thoughtfulness that actually came with that. So when she calls and asks me to do something, I'm more likely to do it because of the fact that she gave so freely of herself and it had an impact on me. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And, um, you know, if you want to hear more from Annette and that type of philosophy on loving on people, you're going to be able to hear from Lana tomorrow because Lana has taken a lot of that philosophy and made it her own and how she works with her CRM. Um, on my Instagram story right now, I've got a picture of the panel up on my Instagram story, not on my regular Instagram feed, the static one, but on my story. Go through my story from today, and the last thing, it says swipe up, realtor swipe up, and it's got a picture of Lana and the other panelists. Swipe up and you can register for that webinar tomorrow. It's at 11 a.m. Central. Uh, I think Annette is moderating it, and, and Lana's going to be a panelist on it, and you're going to hear more ideas of how to love on people. And again, how, do, how are you funneling this love and how are you channeling that? Through your CRM. You're not going to remember it if it's not in your CRM and in your calendar. Um, somebody wanted to know, what is your CRM? My CRM and the CRM I provide for our office for all, all our agents is Market Leader. Um, and then if you're an exit, not at our office, go buy Promo Shop if your office doesn't provide it for you. It is the easiest, best system out there. It is, brand, it is a exit branded version of Market Leader. So Market Leader is who I use. I have a very good relationship with them. Um, no CRM is perfect and quit switching CRMs every six months because you didn't like that one. Probably you didn't know how to drive that one. It's kind of like a car. You didn't read the manual. So um, no CRM is perfect. All of them that stick to your phone and can tell you people's birthday and a home address. And you know, that's, you really don't need it to, you know, reinvent the, the, the day for you. It should just really needs to tell you the basic information. Excellent. What other questions do you have? We are recording this, so we will have the audio, the video, and the text version of this tomorrow that uh, Nick, you, we could probably just share it to the group so everybody can have a replay. I'll put it in the group so everybody can have the replay. Uh, make sure that you mark your calendar for uh, next month. We're going to do this once a month. Let us know how you like the format, especially now that it's getting uh, colder outside. You can sit in the comfort of your home and see us, okay? Uh, each month, it's going to be someone different. We're going to have Zeke. I'm going to come in and talk. Uh, so it's going to be the fourth Thursday of each month at 6 p.m. And we highly recommend that you also invite people who are interested in us as a company because a lot of people, they don't have any access to their managing broker. No one is teaching them absolutely anything. They're out here by themselves. Uh, and, we, and you don't have to be alone in the world of real estate. You, you got Nick. We have a fully staffed office. We have the graphic designer, we have coaching platforms, we have resources, and we don't nickel and damn you as a company. <laughs> no, ma'am. Um, I saw two questions come across I want to answer. Number one, where do you access the previous recordings or other recordings that I've done? Um, you go to teamlibrary.com, and for the general agent population, there is my public YouTube channel. For exit agents in my coaching program, you would just go into the private coaching blog and it's a lot easier to search and navigate. And there's some extra stuff on most of them. And then somebody asked, how do you find 500 contacts? Well, oh. you do a couple different things on that. Now, COVID made it slightly, and I say slightly with a, with a you know, quotation around it, slightly harder to go out and meet new people. Um, however, that is not an excuse. Uh, you know, I have people that are, you know, basically at home 
but they are prospecting their neighborhood. They're going on Remind. I got videos on how to do that through Remind. They're going through Homestap. They're digitally door knocking their neighbors by meeting them on social media. They're doing farming through direct mail. Some of them are still knocking on doors. They're doing online seminars. They're on Nextdoor. Nextdoor is a wonderful app to start meeting your neighbors. Um, they are basically also going back in their phone and in their social media and figuring out who they already know. So I can't believe that you don't know at least 50 to 100 people from your past. And you know those people all should be touched. And beyond that, uh, there is always the opportunity to meet new people. And maybe digitally right now in a lot of ways, I gotta tell you though, I'm meeting people, we're out and about right now. We went, maybe wear a mask, but be smart about about what kind of mask you're wearing. Our graphic designer, our office is doing masks. Marky has really cool masks. So, you know, guys, it's, I'm still wearing my name badge. I got an exit mask. I got a laptop. I can't unplug it because it will unplug my ring light, but I got a laptop skin. I got it on my social media. It is, you don't, you know, I got a license plate frame. Uh, you know, guys, meet new people, however you can meet up. And don't just give them your bid. Look at market. Don't just give your business card or your digital business card. Get their information. When people walk into my open house, this is not open house training, but when people walk into my open house, they can't get in the door without texting me. Why? Because then I got their phone number. And then when they come in, I say, you know, oh, if you want more information than what's here, just give me your email address. Oh, well, guess what? You already texted me. Now I got your email address. Uh oh. You're in my funnel. You're going to be my CRM. You're going to be on my social media, which means you're going to get invitations to my events. So you can get to 500 pretty quickly. And if you are in my coaching, you will find an entire video on how to meet new people. It was filmed pre COVID. However, it is all still good information today. And I joke on Facebook. Well, it's not a joke. I have earned some kind of check from exit every single week and i'm quarantined very people very seldom see me out i came out for cassandra sneed's birthday but i am a homebody i make it do what it do from this chair but when i leave the house i have a mask ask me about real estate i wear t-shirts i wear buttons i make people stop and have conversations with me there is a tool it is called cloud cma I've generate leads from Cloud CMA all the time sitting in this chair via Facebook Live, but I wanna take it a step back. When you wear mask and branded clothes, when they say, well, do you really have houses? Yes, I do. Pull out your mobile device, text Nick Liebert, you know, to this code, and you have them in the palm of your hands. You've remained socially distant. You haven't touched them at all. And so we have every single tool, but you have to either do some, you have to take an action, right? So create video, wear branded call to action gear to make people engage with you. And in little to no time, you should have enough contacts in your customer relationship management system. Go back to the business plan from exit. If you want to earn a six-figure income, you need to add 2,880 contacts to your customer relationship management system annually if your average price point is $250,000. That is how you get to six figures. What else, guys? We're here. We're ready to answer questions. Hey, Nick, we some branding fools because you said yes. laptops. I'm like, oh, laptop, buttons, mags, t-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Nick it. and I together have, oh, my goodness, we have over 40 years of real estate experience combined. And so, uh, and, and some of these things, they never get old because they, they work. Yeah, and if this is, the guys, most of this stuff is free or very, very cheap. You know, this laptop skin, was 22 bucks. My uh, license plate frames, I mean, I paid for them for the office, but they were like 12 bucks a piece. There's stuff you can do online and all this stuff up here is free. You know, all this stuff up here is free. So that's, uh, this is not, uh, we're not asking you to go out and, make, and spend a bunch of money. And in most cases, almost everything I train on, go to my YouTube channel, subscribe to my YouTube channel, almost all that stuff is free. 
So what we'll do is uh, the video will render within the next 12 hours uh, because I have the audio and the text transcription. I will copy and paste that, send it out to the group, and I'll also put the link for next month. We definitely want to double our numbers next month. I would like for each person to bring one person for next month, and we will do a better job of marketing next month. Uh, but we are committed to meeting with you guys. I think we have you down through February on the fourth Thursday of every month. I mean, Tuesday of each month. Yep. We will see you then, guys. Thank you. Everybody have a great evening. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>